Hello, everyone, and welcome to Poros Media Tea Time Talks. My name is Javier, and I'll be your host today. Also, accompanying me, we have Marcel and Mohamed from the University of Oslo and Nara from the University Federal de Uberlandia in Brazil. For the one joining us for the first time, Porus Media Tea Time Talks is a forum that we have been using for these past months to give young Porus Media researchers the opportunity to present their work to the broad community worldwide. Today, we have two great talks lined up. Our first speaker is Lucas Mejia. Similar to myself, Lucas is also a PhD student doing Porus Media Research in the Department of Petroleum Engineering at UT Austin. However, his approach is more experimental. Despite his young age, Lucas has become a renowned expert in the field of sub subsurface flow modeling with microfluidics. He's especially interested in modeling EOR processes and CO2 flow for sequestration applications. Lucas also produces enlightening visuals to understand better what happens in reservoirs. Therefore, I recommend staying tuned for his presentation. If you have any questions or comments that you would like the speakers to address live, please type them in the chat window to the right of the, of the video, and we will ask them at the end of each talk. Lucas, without further ado, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Javier. Uh, so thank you to all the Porous Media Tea Time Talks people. I'm delighted to be here. Um, so today, I'll be talking about the multi-scale visualization of two-phase displacements in porous media um, and their application to chemical flooding. And this entails um, injecting chemicals such as surfactants or polymers into rocks to get more oil out of them. So uh, I'd like to highlight that uh, most of this work was also done with my advisor, Matthew Balhoff. Right, so let's jump into it. So there's two major uh, motivations to do this work. The first is that we want to observe flow at two scales, the micron scale and the centimeter or Darcy scale. So the micro scale is very important because it controls the physics. Uh, you can, for example, model that with Navier-Stokes and uh, get a good idea of what happen what's happening in the porous medium. But the centimeter scale uh, or Darcy scale is great because it has good descriptive models like Darcy. Uh, uh, it basically controls the, the, the economics. Uh, so while the micro scale controls the, the physics, the, the Darcy scale controls the economics. We also want to do this because we have micro models that are highly reproducible um, and they have great optical access. So our group has been working with microfluidics for a few years uh, and we've been working with chips that are pretty small. So uh, we wanted to upscale that to see if we could uh, see the Darcy scale phenomena. So here I'm showing a surfactant float. So basically I had uh, injected water into this chip and then there was a bunch of oil remaining, but then I uh, flooded it with surfactant and we can see that all of the oil is removed. So on the left, we have uh, the Darcy scale visualization. And on the right, we can also see the micro scale visualization. And so these are great visuals because you can interpret them, interpret them with both kinds of models, right? So first, I want to discuss a little bit about the experimental platform that we've been using. Uh, so this micro model uh, we generated in our lab, uh, we made by first generating a synthetic porous medium with a, with a generator that makes a smooth surface. And we do that by convolving a random set of points with a Gaussian kernel, generating a smooth curve in color we have here. We have here. And then we threshold that at some z value, um, and we plot the projection. And so that's the porous media that we see on the, on the right here. But then we also wanted to include it uh, two and a half, uh, two and a half D pore throats. This means that the pore throats are shallower than the pore bodies, because micro models are two D um, materials. We wanted to make three uh, D uh, or quasi three D pore throats, and we do that by using um, a pore network extractor and then uh, some image analysis. And then you can transfer that to the glass, and that's what we see on the right here. So there is a bunch of grains and pores, and then pore throats, and the pore throats are shallower than the pore bodies. Um, and the great thing about this method is that it's very easily scalable. Uh, so we implemented this in a, in a flow in a flow domain that is about 40 centimeters long. Um, and you're limited by the machines that you use, but you can basically print something that is really, really big. So the first application that I want to show um, is viscous water flooding. So this is um, the same thing as polymer flooding, for example. Um, so you inject a, a viscous fluid into, into an, an oil reservoir to, to mobilize oil. So a good rule of thumb for viscous fingering in porous media is that the mobility ratio should be smaller than one. So this means that the injectants should be more viscous than the resting phase and the displacement should move slowly. 
So if you're familiar with, for example, Lenormand plots, uh, this is analogous to saying that uh, if the injectant viscosity is large uh, with respect to the resident viscosity and the injection velocity is low, the displacement will be stable. However, uh, we saw something pretty interesting, uh, that when the irreducible water viscosity is low, even if these conditions above are met, uh, the displacement may finger. Um, and this is interesting because irreducible water is, is water that is immobile to, to infinite, infinite amount of injected oil. So it is non advectable but by oil, um, but if it's there, it might result in fingering. So first, let's check out the, for example, stable case. So here we're injecting a very viscous aqueous phase in blue um, into a chip that is saturated with oil. Uh, in this case, it's black. So it's stable, right, as expected by this, the condition above. However, if we make the irreducible water um, low viscosity, so in the, in the bottom here, the irreducible water is one centipoise, the viscosity, uh, the, the displacement becomes unstable after about one centimeter. Um, so that was pretty interesting because it's very unexpected because the, the, the injected phase is much more viscous than both resident water and resident oil. However, there's a caveat here, which is that the, the amount of resident water in this chip is pretty large, about 50%. We designed this chip so that um, it will hold a large amount of irreducible water. So this is just there's a bunch of grains with holes um, that are opposite to the flow. So next, we wanted to see if this also happened in, for example, natural porous media, random porous media. So here uh, we're utilizing the platform that I saw that I showed you earlier. So we're injecting again a 100 centipoise glycerol solution into um, 13 centipoise oil. Uh, in this case, the first case here has 100 centipoids irreducible water. So uh, whatever water is there uh, is very low viscosity, uh, is very high viscosity, I'm sorry. Uh, but in the, in the second case, I'm showing the displacement that is analogous to the second one that I showed earlier. And so if you look closely, uh, it, it fingers through, right? So again, uh, unexpected because whatever we're injecting is much more viscous than whatever is there. And it's pretty slow. Here I have the snapshots at uh, breakthrough of the second displacement. So we can see that the second displacement broke through much earlier than the first displacement at the same um, non-dimensional time. And we can compare that to, uh, to analytical equations. So we see here that the first displacement is, uh, the one in red is very well described by the analytical equation, the fractional flow equation. Um, the second the second displacement is somewhat okay, uh, except that the the breakthrough time by, uh, described by the experiment or described by the solution, the analytical solution uh, is quite off. Uh, so that was uh, surprising. The, the model clearly needs some adjusting there. Afterwards, we also checked out some some LB simulations to to make the mechanisms more clear for us. And so what we saw is that the water that's irreducible actually intermixes by diffusion with the injected water um, and it stays at, remains at the front. So it, it, it becomes a two front problem. Um, and at the, at the first front, at the downstream front, uh, the local viscosity ratio is actually unfavorable, right? Um, and so fingers form. Uh, but what's more, this becomes like a, like a self-serving mechanism because the fingers actually intermix with more irreducible water as they propagate. And so they keep for example, piercing through the oil. Um, and in the case on the right, uh, it's the boring case where the irreducible water has low viscosity. So there's uh, no fingering there, even though the water is intermixed with the injected water. Right, um, so then we wanted to see what happens in 3D rocks because this is the actual application, uh, <laughs> flow in rocks. Um, but and what we saw is that the, the behavior actually crossed over uh, to 3D. So for example, in the, on the right here, I have recovery curves. Uh, since we don't have optical access in our in our course, we see we can only check for fluid volume. So we saw that the uh, irreducible water actually arrived much earlier when it was low viscosity than when it was um, high viscosity. And we also saw that the residual oil saturation uh, was was lower when the irreducible water viscosity was high. So that was interesting that that we actually got to see the, the behavior transfer to 3D. Right, now um, I'll talk about the second application, which is surfactant flooding. And this involves in injecting a surfactant agent into, into the porous medium to uh, decrease the interfacial tension and then remove oil. And this we did for two reasons. One uh, is that the pore scale understanding of where the surfactant is, is very limited. Uh, so we actually have for a fraction of flow analytical solutions for this, but uh, they don't really tell us much about what's happening at the pore scale. 
Uh, but then uh, the other the other uh, motivation is that our experimental platform that we developed seems to be great for this plat for this type of application. Um, so first, here on the left, I'm showing um, a displacement that we use to carry out in our small ships, right? Um, and we do remove all of the oil. Uh, However, there is clearly no bank as, as observed in this, in, this in this fractional flow solution above. Uh, but if we utilize our new platform, we actually see the formation of phase banks. Um, the reason for that is that the, the tiny chips don't have enough space for the coalescence of, of mobilized phase. Right, so this is the experiment that I showed at the beginning, um, surfactant flood, where I'm removing oil. Uh, the thing is that the oil here is very viscous, or uh, moderately viscous, it's 83 centipoise, uh, while the aqueous phase is one centipoise. Um, and the displacements are pretty slow. Uh, we can visualize them at both, uh, at, at both scales, the centimeter and Darcy. Uh, but this still doesn't tell us very clearly where the surfactant is. So what I'm going to do now is just show you the same displacement, but I dyed the, uh, the injected phase with green. And so what we see is, is pretty interesting, actually. So uh, we see the formation of our, of our phase bank in black here. Um, but we, what we also see is that there is injected phase green ahead of that oil bank. And that is not what is described by the fractional flow solution. So all of the surfactant and the injected aqueous phase should be behind the oil. Bank. So that was very new for us. Then again, we can take a bunch of the uh, microscopic images and then stitch them together. And that, that's what I'm showing here. So this is the image at Breakthrough, uh, where we see the injected green phase um, actually coming out of the ship. Um, and the oil bank is pretty clear here. And we have a long finger of micro emulsion behind it. Um, and it's pretty evident from this, from this picture that the, there is green ahead of the oil bank. And that is what what we what we want to model now, right? So now that we uh, actually uh, got to see the, the novel behavior, we're trying to capture that in our model. So first, um, I'm currently we're currently running four scale models. We're using intermixing foam. Um, so th these are sort of agreeing right now in that we have some surfactant ahead of the um, oil. However, not to the degree that we saw in the in the micro model experiments. And for the fractional flow, what we're doing now is adding another miscible curve that absorbs on the oil. Uh, hopefully, that will give us what we want. Um, it's taking a little effort. Uh, I haven't made it work yet, but uh, I'm optimistic about that. Um, and with that, uh, after showing the two applications, just please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Lucas, for this excellent presentation. I'd like to mention that everyone who wants to ask a question can type it in the comment section. So, until we get um, a few questions in the comment section, I have a question of my own. Do you, uh, do you see any intermittent um, phase or connectivity pass phase in your flow experiments? I mean, in the porous scales. Uh, so, I, we do, let me show you really quickly. The, in, the, in this first case, we do uh, for, the, for the second case. So, uh, Right after the fingers move through, um, there is coalescence of fingers in the middle. Um, and there you see intermittent, or like not really intermittent, but it's more like ganglion dynamics type of flow. Um, for intermittency, I think it's easier to see in 3D, but I haven't really looked for it, to be honest. Um, I'm sure I probably can find some cases if I'd like zoom into in the middle here somewhere. Um, yeah. Oh. Lucas, I, I have a question for you. Uh, the, the first uh, phenomenon that you presented is, is very interesting because it's not super intuitive uh, to to us uh, petroleum engineers. So could you elaborate on what's the impact of the injection velocity and maybe the dimensionless numbers um, that uh, how, how how is this related to fingering? How's the, the your injection velocity related to how these two uh, Type of water, type of water mixed together. 
Right. Uh, yeah. So that's that's something that we also looked um, at pretty extensively, especially because uh, in this case, if you inject more quickly, uh, you actually don't see any fingering, um, and that is because the, the the mixing happens. Well, the mixing relative to to advection uh, happens more. Uh, slowly if you will so if there's not enough time for the water in this in these squares or in the like irreducible water pores to mix with the injected water you will actually not see any fingering uh, which is uh, like counterintuitive to what you see in lenormand plus so this is like a non-monotonic type of behavior right so you see fingering at slow velocities uh, and then non-fingering at high velocities basically uh, so that was cool yeah, that was different for us for example and do you think this this phenomenon is it uh, cross media dependent? For example, if we increase the roughness of the pores and networks, or increase the distribution of sizes, do you think can we see the same effect in different ranges? I think you can, uh, but within within a certain window of homogeneity, if you will. Um, so if you, for example, I, I I increase the roughness, and that actually helps you to visualize the 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 like the fingering more easily because you actually hold more irreducible water um, in those like in those tiny crevices uh, of roughness. Uh, but if you have a pore size distribution that is uh, too wide, um, like some fractures there, um, everything flows through the fractures and um, you, you'd have to increase the injectant viscosity quite a bit in order to um, like see any mobilization of this irreducible water to a uniform front, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we have one question from um, Nara. Thanks for the presentation. What do you expect if a more viscous fluid is used as the displacing phase in the first experiment? Uh, right, so I tried, uh, this was cool, because I tried uh, injecting glycerol at 90, uh, 98%, which is like 600 centipoids, uh, and you still saw fingering, um, even for this geometry that holds very little irreducible water. So this one actually holds about five to seven percent um, so not as much as the previous one basically we're not cheating with this one um, and even with very very viscous injected phase you still see some fingering uh, yeah wonderful thank you lucas thank you for this excellent uh, presentation and for the wonderful answers to the to the questions i think now we can uh, move on to the second speaker our second speaker is Rosemary Kuispe Zavala, a PhD student of computational modeling at, labor at Laboratory of Applied Mathematics, Federal University of Huiz de Fora. In her research, she uses fractional flow theory to study foam injection models. Today, Rosemary is going to talk about analytical solution of population balance model describing foam displacement. Thank you, Rosemary, for joining us, and the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for the opportunity to present our work. Uh, today, I will show the results of our paper, which was published less than 15 days ago, actually on April 7. This work was carried out under supervision of Professor Gregory Shapiro and Dr. Luis Lozano in collaboration with Professor Pacelli Sita. First of all, I will talk about um, the fan utility. This is used in fan injection, uh, which is an enhanced or recovery method, and that aims to improve sweep efficiency of gas. For example, here is um, shown a figure with two important differences between gas injection and fan injection. On the left, uh, Two of the main effects that make it difficult to scan gas injection are shown. These are viscous fingering, uh, it is preferred paths, and existence of highly permeable channels that carry CO2 to the top of the reservoir via gravitational segregation. On the right, uh, we have a scheme that represents the Fuan injection where uh, we notice that the viscous fingering is uh, controlled and highly permeable uh, channels are covered. Uh, 
also the foam is used in contaminate soils to remove hydrophobic organic compounds and heavy metals. In this figure, I will speak broadly science, it is not my area. The surfactant foam is flushed through the contaminate zone, where it's essentially washed and sweep the soils, thereby significantly expediting contaminate extraction, bringing them to the surface for the further treatment. This work aims to explain the experiment present in Sinju et al. 2013 and Sinju Sita 2015. The experiment used surfactant alpha lecithin sulfonate gas nitrogen in a sample uh, of bentimer sanctum. The water saturation was determined using an X-ray computer tomography. For the development of this work, we use the parameters values of Sinju Sita 2015. Also, uh, the experiment presented in Sinju Sita 2015 was compared with numerical result of a stochastic bubble population model, obtaining a good agreement. This is two phase um, two phase model that describe the displacement of the form. Uh, the experiment exhibits a traveling wave profile, so uh, we are interested in traveling wave solution of a foam injection model. Then, the definition of a solution in traveling wave form is present. Thus, a partial differential equation uh, has a solution in the traveling wave form by making a change of variables from X and T to the traveling variable C. From a PDE system, if you obtain an ODE system, whose solution approaches constant values, denoted by W plus and W minus when C goes to uh, plus infinity or minus infinity. Now, uh, the solution of a simplification of the called Zeta stochastic bubble population balance model will be shown. Uh, the simplified stochastic bubble population model considers the hypothesis here presented in this work mentioning that in the original model, the phase are compressible and the mobilities are non newtonian Here we presented the model to the study. This model is described by a system of two partial differential equations. One equation is called the Rapoport list equation for water saturation and the other is a population balance equation of function two. If we change the source term, this is the expression in purple. This system can represent another form injection model. To solve this system, we use the initial condition given in four, for uh, where the function two in local equilibrium is constant. We consider the state plus fixed and the state minus variable throughout the physical domain. Finding a solution in the traveling wave form of the PD simplified system presented in the previous slide is equivalent to finding a solution in this OGE system that links the minus and plus equilibrium. So, we have a more accessible system to solve from a mathematical point of view. An important result of the change in variables is that we can have an analytical expression for the velocity of foam front. In order to study the existence of the OGE system solution, we use the phase portrait analysis. For this, it's necessary to find the equilibrium points 
of the OD system shown in five. An equilibrium is a stationary solution for the system five. Hence, in each balance, we evaluate the Jacobian matrix of five and uh, five its agent values. Thus, we obtain the different equilibrium when we vary it uh, S, W minus, and KC. These are source, sink, saddle, and source or sink spiral. From this study, solution are obtained and classified according to the type of equilibrium. Also, the, equili the analytical study results are validated with the results numerically obtained by means of the reaction convection diffusion simulator. Using the same mathematical theory in Lausanne Code 2021, we just change variables to obtain an OG system in the traveling variables. Therefore, um, through phase portrait analysis, we were able to classify the solutions in the parameters space SW minus and KG with KC equals zero. We obtained two regions. In region one, the equilibria is uh, our source and zero, and there is an orbit connecting the left to right. In region two, the equilibria are zero and zero, and the solution are type the back level. This is a wave sequence composed by one spreading wave and one traveling wave. In order to validate mm, this simplified model solution, we compare our analytical results with, with numerical simulation of a more general uh, system. Uh, in points uh, B, C, and G. We also compare the analytical solution with experimental data and point A and E. Note that uh, all numerical and laboratory experiments obtained up to now correspond to injection conditions in region one. Here, uh, comparison with uh, numerical simulation for three times is present in, at point B. Not that in the solution of most general model, there is a great fall in the profile. This behavior can be a result that consider the phase compressible in the model. Uh, we, uh, here we have a comparison with experimental data in point A, which is presented for different times. In this figure, the green lines represent the experimental data and the blue lines correspond to the analytical result. The analytical solution and experiment need some time to present an stable profile. Thus, Theoretical and experimental data are expected to reach an agreement after some transient stage. As conclusions, we obtain a model that successfully describes the experiment, allowing us to obtain analytical solutions. Also, its solution is in good agreement with solution of the complete model. Um, okay. The expression. Uh, I'm gonna, excuse, excuse. Sorry, go ahead. <coughs> An analytical expression for the velocity of foam front was found. There are two type solutions, 
In region one, the solutions have a traveling profile. In region two, the solutions are tight back level. The analytical solutions for injection condition in region one match numerical solutions of complete model and experimental data. In region two, the behavioral solutions was not described early. Sense. Thank you very much, uh, Rosemary. So um, if we have any questions, uh, please type in in the comments. Um, as I had agreed before the talk, I will try to translate the questions also to Portuguese to make it a bit more understandable for everyone. Um, so I will start with one question myself and I will do it first in English and then in Portuguese. And then uh, Rosemary, you can feel free to answer it however you like. Um, the, trans the transient part of the solution, so that happens in the experiments and I suppose also in the numerics. Do you think it's also possible to catch that on the analytical model? Uh, so, eu vou somente dizer a mesma coisa em português agora. A parte transiente das soluções, uh, ela aparece nos experimentos e também uh, nas uh, simulações. Você acha que seria possível uh, incluir isso também no modelo analítico? A parte trasciente do mas no modelo analítico eh, temos a parte trasciente mm. eh, e Mas um, nós estamos interessados num, em modelos com um perfil viajante, já que esse perfil eh, se, um, se pode observar nos experimentos e mesmo eh, nas simulações numéricas. Então... E, e, e por isso que nós temos essa, esse comportamento estacionário, esse perfil estacionário para a solução analítica. Entendo. Estamos procurando um, soluções desse tipo. Certo. Então vou somente traduzir para inglês. Uh, so, uh, what she, uh, Rosemary has just mentioned, that the analytical model also includes the transient part, but the, the traveling wave uh, solution is the one that is also observed in the experiments and in the numerics. So this is why it has been focused more strongly in the work. So, uh, thank you, uh, Rosemary. If we have, do we have any other questions? I think we don't have any questions from the audience now. So, um, Okay, there is uh, one uh, question from uh, Adolfo Pires. Um, so I will show it on the screen and I will try to translate it also to Portuguese. Um, so Adolfo says, Rosemary, very nice presentation. Did you map the solution for any left and right initial conditions? Um, um, Rosemary, muito, muito, a apresentação muito boa. Você mapeou a solução para qualquer a uh, condição inicial esquerda e, e direita? É, é, não, na verdade, é, considerei o, a condição inicial é, da direita fixa e é, o lado esquerdo em todo o domínio. Uh, a direita fixa e o lado esquerdo? É, variável. Em todo o lado esquerdo varia. Uhum. 
So uh, Rosemary mentions that she had uh, a fixed condition for the right side and the left the side was variable all over the domain. Okay, so I think uh, this was our last question. So um, I would like to thank both speakers and our audience from today, Rosemary and Lucas, thank you very much. So we move on to the uh, closing slides of this uh, session. And uh, I would like to, uh, for two weeks from now, we have another session. And up to now, we have a one confirmed speaker um, from the Indian Institute of Technology. You can see her name and the talk there. And we are still uh, organizing the second speaker. So that will be advertised very soon. And uh, I would also like to mention that today is actually the deadline for the early bird registration for Interpor. So don't forget about that. You have a discounted fee up to today and you can go to interpor.org to register for the online conference. Thank you very much. On behalf of the whole Forest Media Tea Time Talks, you can see we are on the screen there. It's a very big uh, team now. It takes over your whole screen. I'm very happy. And we'll see you again in uh, two weeks. Bye-bye.